Aneno nyako moro ka nyinge nga atoti to bendo nyalo miel ngo ma nyinge nga atoti to be onyalo miel koda nyinge nga atoti atoti sudi kai mondi miel koda ya watoti sudi kai monda miel kodi atoti lovely deadly nyako ni iroma wi Hey what's going on guys it's Jean and thank you so much for coming back to my YouTube channel if you're new I'm going to give you a minute to subscribe Okay now we can continue <laughs> Make sure you subscribe. We're almost at 2k. I don't know whether we've already hit 2k by the time this video is going up But if not, please subscribe so that you can get to 2k So if you're watching this video, then it probably means one you are a model two you're interested in becoming a model or three <laughs> Maybe you just like my videos. So since the last time I made a modeling video It's almost been one year like questions and all that about modeling so the last time that you guys saw me was only doing commercials but right now I've ventured into a little bit more of modeling so I'm going to just tell you guys a little bit more about modeling from my point of view and from my experience so far I am not that experienced so I'm just giving you my experience as a commercial model for two years and a runway model for slightly under a year and I asked you guys to ask me questions on Instagram and on my whatsapp status so I'm just going to be answering a little bit of those questions in this video as well and if you have any more questions please make sure to leave them down below I'll be able to answer them if I can or we'll google them together or fellow models that are watching will also be able to answer so let's get straight into the video so firstly I'm going to define the two types of modeling that I mostly major in in case you don't know what they are and what the difference is so commercial modeling means a model who is in ads or print so when you see a TV commercial that is a commercial model and for a commercial model there are literally no age restrictions, no height, no weight, no nothing. Literally how you are because it's supposed to depict like day to day how people actually are and that's what makes a commercial realistic. I've actually done all about my experience in commercial modeling, I won't get much into that and the link is right up here. So commercial models are the ones that you see advertising things on TV, ETC and on billboards. A print model is categorized under a commercial model. Secondly, a runway model is literally someone who walks on a catwalk. That is literally what a runway model is and it's mostly used to advertise hair or the clothes that you're in and that is the simple difference between commercial modeling and runway modeling. So I'm going to get into the questions that have been asked and that will guide me through this video. Okay. So one question is, I want to be a model, but I think that I'm too short for runway. So what kind of modeling would you advise? So you guys, if you did not know, there are almost 15 different kinds of modeling. And these days, literally, it does not matter. You don't have to be tall and slim. I am very tall. I am 5'11", so I do qualify for height-wise in case it was like height you have to be tall but i'm not the slimmest i'm not big no but i'm not at a model size so these days you can be so many different kinds of models so there's a day a friend of mine posted the some different kinds of modeling on her whatsapp story and i took screenshots hi bet so i'll just brush through them but if you'd like me to go like more in depth you can let me know so i do a full video on that or there's a link that i put of a video that i've seen that's really helpful so the different kinds of modeling, these are not even all of it. There's editorial, there's runway, commercial, glamour, promotion. Oh, I'm a promotion model as well. And I'll get a little bit into that. Fitness, print, plus size. And there's so many other different kinds of modeling. So as I've said, I'm a promotion model as well. And it's literally the modeling that you do when you're modeling for brands. Like I was a model for Monster. I've done a little few others. You call them promo girls here, yeah, we call them promo girls, so I have done a lot of modeling for brands, so that is also a different kind of modeling. So depending on your size, your height, etc, there's always going to be something that fits for you. You don't have to look some type of way, you don't have to be this or that, there's always going to be a type of modeling for you. Another question that I've gotten is, how did you start? Can someone my size do it too or my color? So my friend who asked that is actually a girl who is a bit darker and let me tell you, for runway, darker girls are so beautiful. I'm not going to say it, darker girls are superior to lighter girls, lighter girls are superior to darker girls, no. Literally, I model only in Kenya, I've not modeled out of Kenya. So from that, I would like to say that no. No, 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 no. A long time ago, though, for promos, people used to be like, oh, to my picture, come on, light skin, in nini. But these days, I feel like there's similar opportunities for darker girls and for lighter girls. I feel like it's your skill, especially if it's runway, your walk. 
that is going to get you where you are. I've been practicing, my work has gotten slightly better from my first runway, but your color will not affect anything here. I'm not able to talk about any other country, but here, mm -mm. And it says your size, I've just spoken about the different kinds of modeling, so there's a modeling for all kinds of sizes these days, it doesn't even matter. Even for runway, we have plus sized models, so you can literally do, you can do anything, you can do anything you want. And then you've asked how I started. So I think in the video, which I'm going to put the link here once again, I've put how I started commercial modeling. But how I started for runway, you literally know these messages that go around Instagram, oh, we're looking for models, etc. I literally saw one of those and I applied and I got the job with zero experience. I was so nervous and my walk, I felt like I was just trembling the whole way. And how I learned a few of my jobs, or all of my jobs actually, is through auditions. So, I know a lot of people usually ask, how do you hear about auditions? Literally, I hear most of them from my modeling friends, but there are also some few agencies that I have worked with that once you work with them, they keep your number because they usually have your photos, etc. So they can reach out to you when you have like when they have jobs and they think that you'd be suitable so they call you in for auditions and i'm going to show you guys a little bit more on auditions and a few auditions i've done etc but a few agencies i get this question a lot a few agencies that i've worked with include ajuma versatile versatile is my first agency that i worked with if you've ever seen my former video once again please check that out because i feel like it will answer so many of your questions there's 2.4 films there's zindua for Runway, which I just recently worked with for my latest uh, Runway, which was Samantha Bridal. If you've not checked out that vlog, then then I worked with Vela for that. There's so many different agencies that offer different things. And there's some agencies that are for commercial, for Runway, or Runway and commercial. So there are so many different agencies. And I get most of my jobs through auditioning. But there's also that small part which is through referrals. Referrals really, really work and I feel like it's really important whenever you go for a job, be your best. There's another video I saw again that I'm going to link here, like 10 rules for when you do a job. Don't be a diva, do your best, you know, like just bring your all so that everyone in that team will want to work with you. Because next time a makeup artist will be called and they'll come with their model, they'll refer you. The hairdresser will be asked to come with a model, they'll refer you, the agency will want someone and they'll call you once again. So I feel like every job that you do, you literally have to give it your all so that everyone can want to work with you again. Because it's really easy for people to never ever want to work with you again. And I feel like being a diva on set is one of the major issues that can cause no one to want to work with you again. So I really try to just chill, you know? Just chill. Utulia to be down to earth and do what you have to do. Don't be followed around. You just need to do what you have to do. I'm seeing a question asking me, are you managed by anyone or any company? No, I am an individual model or in layman's term, I am a freelance, but I do work with several different agencies. So I don't know whether to advise you to be signed or not, it depends, but it's definitely easier for an agency to pitch you or like to push jobs for you as opposed to you having to do it as an individual, but it depends on you whether you want to be signed or not. Maybe one day I will be, but at the moment I'm just an individual model. Next, I'm seeing what type of photos should be in a portfolio. I feel like this video I should do a whole other video on its own to put what kinds of photos should be in a portfolio. But the first thing and most important thing is a Polaroid. And a Polaroid is a photo that is taken in your natural state wearing either black or white vest and either black or blue jeans or tights. And you're supposed to be in your most natural state. And your hair is supposed to be open, everything, and most preferably is shot in natural light. And the best part about Polaroids is that you can take it either with a phone or a camera. And for Polaroids, you should have a half shot, a full shot, like a complete profile, and a full one when you're slightly facing the side. So I feel like the most important photo in our portfolio is a Polaroid, among other few photos, professional photos. Please don't put selfies in your portfolio, don't put selfies in your portfolio. I'll try link a video, but let me know if you guys want me to talk in depth about photos that should be in your portfolio. But it should be a variety of photos, and what I would advise you is have a variety of photographers, because each photographer photographs you differently, different angles, or they like key 
different things in your appearance maybe someone will highlight your eyes someone will highlight other features of your face someone will highlight your body nicely so each photographer will make the photos look different so i'd advise you to just look for many different photographers you can collab or if you're able to afford it then you pay them for very good photos i'll try get a link of the different types of photos that you should have in your portfolio another question that i've been asked is the clothes that you model do you take them home no honey unless you want to buy it because half the time the clothes are so expensive you can find that you're modeling a uh, 30,000 clothes that costs more than maybe what you're being paid so they're not going to pay you and give you the clothes but sometimes there are few companies etc who pay you with the clothes so then maybe you can but i've never seen any company that pays you money and pays you with the clothes so it's either or if you ask me i prefer money because i have clothes at home Another question I'm seeing here is what is the height requirement? So once again, different modeling, different requirements. But for runway, I would really like to think for girls, it is 5'9". If I'm not wrong, please correct me if I am. 5'9 to 5'11". For guys, it's usually maybe 5'10", but 6 feet going up, maybe 6 feet to 6'3". But I feel like it changes, it varies from place to place. But I feel like in Kenya, we are much more lenient. People are so lenient on the height, you find that someone is strutting the runway, they're not that tall, but they've got the six inch heels on and now they're tall, you know? So it varies, but for runway, you do have to be quite tall. International standards, a girl has to be 5'9", five 5'10", five and a guy has to be six feet. But here it varies, and for other different kinds of modeling that do not include runway, your height really does not matter at all. Another question I'm seeing here is what is the biggest misconception people have about modeling? Hey, so this one, they're quite a number. A couple of people feel like modeling is so easy, like, oh my god, you're just paid to take photos. Sis, have you ever been on set for 24 hours? And in those 24 hours, you have to give your A game. It's really not as easy as it looks. Some people will see you just smiling in a photo and think it's so easy. You don't know, like, maybe sometimes 100 photos were taken for you to take that photo. Sometimes on set, you have to sacrifice because you can't be shooting, you're eating, things will go on the cloth. Nee, 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 nee. No, you have to sacrifice. It'll be like, stay professional, do the job, and then after the job is done is when you're going to eat. So sometimes you're hungry, but you can't be there taking photos like... No, 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 no. You have to do your job and keep it professional that time you are so hungry. And sometimes you have to be in your heels for so many hours and you can't whine about it. It's not easy to be in heels for that long. Let me tell you, it's not that easy. So some people feel like, oh, modeling, it's so easy. It's really not that easy. It's not actually the easiest job, you know. I'm passionate about it, so I do those things like from my heart. But from an outsider looking in, if you were to see everything that goes on backstage, it you see, it's really not that easy. And yeah, I'm still on that misconception of it being so easy. So many times you are turned down and this can really break your heart. You know, so many times you go for auditions, they tell you no and you're just there. You have to like suck it up and keep trying and keep trying. Because one thing I say is, hey, you try and get a no, then don't try. Because if you don't try, then you'll get nothing. So it's rather you try and get a no and try once again and keep trying and keep trying. Another misconception that people have of models is that you can't be smart. If you're a model, you're not smart. Correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of people feel that way. Personally, not to be big-headed, but I believe that I am extremely smart and I'm a model as well. It doesn't mean at team modeling has to be a fallback plan of, oh, you weren't able to do good in school, so now you're a model. And I know a lot of people who feel or think that way. But no, you can be a model because it's what you love to do, but you are equally smart or smarter than people who are like in more professional fields, if you know what I mean. Another misconception is that models are so stuck up and I would like to say that that does not, that doesn't have to literally mean that because you're a model, you're that way. No, it's just people like individuals. You can find someone who is a model who is not stuck up and someone who is in a different field who's stuck up. It doesn't mean that because you're a model, you'll be big headed and you'll just be like, you know, mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, so I feel like those are a few of the misconceptions that people have of modeling, that it's so easy, that maybe you're doing it because you're not able to do any other thing, and that, yeah, people feel like models are so stuck up. Because a lot of the time when people DM me and I reply, they're usually shocked. Like, oh, you reply messages, and I'm like, yeah, why would I not? Why would I not reply? One of the final questions I'm seeing here is, if you were to change your career, what would you do? 
I would never change my career. I'm so happy that what I do, I'm passionate about because I'm a firm believer in doing what you love. I'm a really, really firm believer in doing what you love, not doing what you have to, to get by. Sometimes you'll do what you have to do so that you can save ETC. Sometimes you don't always have to love what you do. But I feel like in the long run, it's really important to be passionate about what you do because it even shows, it will show in the product, you know? Like the outcome of it will show that hey, this person did this with so much love. So I would not, if I would have any other job, it would just be this. I don't see myself doing any other thing, but I also influence. So if I wasn't a model, I feel like I'd be an influencer. And I'm also really, really into journalism. So maybe those three. But other than that, I don't think there's anything else. Like when I was growing up, I used to want to be a lawyer. <laughs> I wanted to be a lawyer at some point, but when I went for my work experience in a law firm, right then and there, hi Mel, I knew that I'm not going to be a lawyer. And there's a time that I wanted to be a fashion designer. I'm really passionate about fashion and all that. Like, I'm a really artsy person. Not that I'm not book smart, because I am, but I'm more of an artsy person than, oh, I want to be a doctor. So I feel like if I wasn't a model, maybe I would be a journalist, which I am going to be. So just like in this creative field, cre creating content, like influencing, modeling, nothing too far from it. Not at a pharmacist or a doctor or mm -mm, mm -mm, none of that. So yeah, that's basically all the questions that I've gotten. If you have any more questions on modeling, please let me know. But I hope I've touched a little bit on the questions that you guys usually have because my dms half the time have modeling questions if you have any more please 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 just leave them in the comment section below and i'll make sure i answer or anyone else who is able to please answer and if you're a model watching and you have anything else to add on to this please make sure you do but just in summary i'd like to say there's so many different kinds of modeling so don't feel restricted that you, oh i'm not tall enough oh i'm not this enough mm -mm. for your size your height everything there's always going to be a modeling that like a kind of modeling that fits you. It can even be like modeling your hands, sis, you know? If you have pretty hands or pretty toes, there's going to be that for you. And how you get jobs, you have to audition. You have to audition. And half the time, even pages post when they're looking for people. Like my La Elegant job I actually got from my friend who forwarded it to me. She showed me that the owner of La Elegant posted that she was looking for models. So I literally DM'd them and I got the job. So these days social media plays a huge role, a huge role. Cause my Zaron ambassadorship, I also got it from social media. They literally posted they were looking for Zaron ambassadors and I did what was needed to be done. And luckily I was one of the winners. So you have to audition. Sometimes the audition is social media and sometimes it's this mass messages, looking for models, send your photos, etc. Yeah. So I don't know if there's any more questions that I'm frequently asked. I think that's it for now. But if you guys ever get any more questions, please feel free to ask. And if you're watching this video and you want to start and you don't know how, just start. And I'd like to advise you to also keep your Instagram very professional. This day's Instagram Nikama. I can also call Instagram a portfolio. Instagram Nika portfolio, yeah. So you have to keep it very serious. And what I had uh, Paynet saying on today's um, Vela Talks, she does talks every week on Saturday, so you can check them out on Vela Models. So today she was saying that make sure you keep your Instagram professional and use your actual name. My Instagram is Jean Ojiro, and I feel like it's very professional even when someone wants to approach you and your name is that Jean Ojiro. My Instagram used to be Apple Pixie. I was young, I was young. And my Facebook used to be Jean Macuti. I was young once again, but I feel like right now you just have your name as Jean Ojiro and it also helps you to build your brand, you know? So just make sure your Instagram is very professional. You take good photos, good, good photos, because so many people are scouted off of social media. So every photo that you put out there, you don't know who might be looking. So take it very, very seriously. And yeah, I don't know if there's anything more to add on to that, but if you have anything, just leave it down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more modeling videos, please let me know. And if you liked it, make sure you drop a big thumbs up. Like, share, comment and subscribe. Let me know what other kinds of modeling videos you'd like or any other videos in general. Yeah. And always remember to be you and stay true. Bye. Thank you.